everyone. Um, I am going to do something new today. Today's day 16 of 30 days 34s and the plan is to do something new. So I'm going to do something new with these two cups. I might not be able to finish it till the morning and you'll understand why once you've seen the colours go in there and I'll explain what I'm doing. I am going to use some colours that I've got um, sort of lying around. I'm going to use up some of the paints that I've got already and then I'll mix a couple of extra colours. So I've got some gold and some prism violet and some phthalo blue. The gold is Liquitex Basics Gold and the Turner Red Gold Powder Pigment by Neo Colour. Well, the brand is Turner and the, the range is Neo Colour and it's red gold. This is powder. Um, so that's mixed with Liquitex Basics Gold there. This is Prism Violet mixed with the Liquitex Basics Prism Violet. And this is Thalo Blue, which is the Sostrena Green um, Thalo Blue here. This is uh, Liquitex Basics Titanium White. All of these paints so far are mixed 50-50 with my pouring medium, which is 50% white blue and 50% distilled water. My distilled water are mixed a cap full of De La Rani Flow Enhancer to 500 millilitres of distilled water and so all of the water that I use has that Flow Enhancer mixed into it. Funny, but it's okay, I think. Okay, next up, prism violet. Put some more white in this one first. Just a touch in there. Oh, yeah, this is fine. One down low on this side, a little bit down low here. Yeah. More phthalo, phthalo blue here. Let's put some more gold in there, a bit more in there. Yesterday I found this pearl green, I've got left over the Eterna Acryl Gouache. So I'm going to mix this up with pouring medium. This dries clear and it's an interference paint. So it dries with a kind of green iridescent shift over it. And I'm going to fill these cups up to the brim. I'm going to fill these cups up with a, a little bit of this. Interference paint in here, pouring medium. So there's no silicon in either of these. I thought about it, but um, I haven't put any in. I generally don't get cells anyway. I either get a million tiny little cells. Okay, the last thing I'm going to put in is a bit of Liquitex pouring medium straight because I don't know what that does straight. Maybe it will create some translucence. So these are going in the freezer. 
They're going to take a while, I'm sure, to freeze. Got a couple of ice packs around there. Yeah, I'm just going to leave it there, see what happens to it, and then I'm going to try and flip it out like that, uh, put it on a canvas, and let it melt. And the melting makes the pour. I don't touch it. We'll see what happens. So I'm checking on this paint, and it's frozen solid now. It's like an ice lolly. Set up and see a mixture of Liquitex pouring medium. There's some interesting spots of the prism violet. You can see a little gold and the phthalo blue and white in there. some time lapse overnight and um, the paint has melted <clears throat> it's very lumpy and bumpy here it's a good I don't know a quarter of an inch a centimeter half an inch um, above the the canvas surface so I although there are some pretty bits where it's kind of blurred out and this watercolor style I think I'm gonna have to try and move it around because this is very very high in relief um, the water content of the paint and the pigment seems to have uh, sort of separated in, in places but not everywhere. I'm going to try and move it around and I might add some white to it and I'll see if I can kind of preserve some of the essence of it but I'm going to have to cover up this completely dry canvas and uh, so it's inevitably it's going to change. It doesn't seem particularly eager to move. It's moving a little bit, but obviously there's a, a massive consistency variation. You can see that there is this, uh, this big lump of paint here. Okay, I think what I'm gonna try and do is to cover all of the white canvas with some of my pre-mixed white that's quite fluid. Um, to try and encourage it to sort of shift out a little bit and see if I can get this to spread. I think I'm probably going to have to swipe or use a palette knife on this because it looks really chunky. It's been out all night so it will have started to maybe form a skin on the top. Right, this canvas is soaked through here which obviously doesn't happen normally because the acrylic will start to dry before the canvas gets totally saturated and there's not that much water in it etc but I'm going to fill in like you'd fill in an icing cookie or something this area it's very very wet this white but that's what I want I can always thicken it up a little bit put another layer on that's a bit more um, a bit thicker later but I want to be able to try and compensate for this okay let's try it and see if we can get any movement here. It's difficult, I can see the white is going over over the paint that's there. It seems to be very set in place. So I may just have to go straight for a swipe and choose, I guess I'm going to have to go in this direction just because of the space at the moment. But you can see there's a, um, a quite a big level difference between the paint from last night. It's dried with a, an edge. I think I may try this again with the other cup and put it onto a wet base or keep re-wetting the base or something. I've got no idea what's going to happen here, but I cannot leave this paint all in the middle. So I'm going to just hit it with this, um, with this palette knife and hope for the best. Okay, so I'm just getting mud here, so I'm going to get stuck in because I will be scraping this canvas. You can see this is like a paste. So 
and all of the water's kind of seeped out here it's just very very watery and it's kind of seeped out and gone under through the, the uh, fabric of the canvas this line around the edges dried kind of almost hard I'm going to be able to scrape that off but it's going to require a bit of energy um, and it's got this weird kind of granular ice cream thing going on that is not great I wonder how this would work in the summer when the ambient temperature was like over 30 or something like that so it would be much much warmer and um, kind of make it melt like ice cream in a couple of hours or less. Um, I may revisit this in the summer because it's going to be really really hot. Anything that cools me down is always welcome. I'm going to sling a bit more white on here. You can see this is so fluid, um, probably too much at this point but uh, this purpley stuff is really thick so let's, um, let's see if I can get some kind of base. It's going to be a bit gritty whatever happens this canvas doesn't mean I can't reuse it but I'm definitely going to have to uh... hi again well this looks quite similar in terms of the fact that it's split in the middle, but um, the rest of the paint looks really, really different. It's this gold. This is what's messing everything up. It's that powder in the gold, I think. I think that if I used an ice cube tray or some much smaller vessel, like these cups or something, that I would not have the same problem melting. I think I need to use only straight acrylics with no additives. That Turner powder seems to have really created something that is just not spreading out at all. And I also think that I need to have a warmer ambient temperature and that that might create something that looks a bit more successful. 